Hey, sixth grade. In this video, we're going to be reviewing uh, the order of operations, and specifically, uh, we're going to be using the order of operations along with what we know about integers in this video. Uh, so just as a quick reminder, uh, order of operations, we use this acronym here um, at the top to help us remember uh, in what order uh, or what steps to perform each of our operations. We always start with uh, parentheses or more specifically grouping symbols. So anytime you have um, parentheses or brackets or braces, um, you always start with what's inside those and work from the inside out. Um, in these examples here, you might see even some absolute value bars, okay, and absolute value bars also count as grouping symbols here. Uh, so this P uh, in PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally can stand for a lot of things, okay. Uh, once you've done everything inside grouping symbols, uh, the next uh, is E, which stands for exponents. Okay, so any uh, exponents you see, go ahead and uh, simplify those parts of your uh, problem. And then after you do exponents, it's multiplication and division from left to right. Okay, so if division comes before multiplication, do that first. Um, if multiplication is before division, do that first. So it's always left to right. And then after you've done everything else, addition and subtraction comes last. And again, that's from left to right. So let's practice now just with a few examples here below. Uh, number one, you have 80 divided by 8 minus 2 times 4. There are no grouping symbols and there are no exponents. So we jump right to uh, this third step here and we do any multiplication or division we see from left to right. So the first thing I see is division, 80 divided by 8. 80 divided by 8 we know is 10, so I'm going to simplify that to 10 and then everything else is going to come down. I have this minus 2 and then this times 4. Okay, next I see subtraction here, 10 minus 2, but then I see multiplication at the end, times 4. So multiplication uh, comes before any subtraction, so we're going to skip that subtraction and we're going to multiply here. Now, be careful with your signs. Uh, think about the 10 is being covered up for a moment and treat this 2 as a negative 2. This is like having a negative 2 times 4 here. You know a negative 2 times 4, a negative times a positive is going to give you a negative, so this actually becomes negative 8. So make sure that minus sign goes in front of the 8 when you bring this down. The 10 then just drops, and so now you have the problem 10 subtract 8, and 10 subtract 8 is 2. So it's really important to be careful with your signs uh, in each step of this problem. Uh, only do one step at a time, and notice how I'm working vertically um, in this problem. I'm going to do that in all the other problems, and I would like you doing that too. Okay, number two, negative 25 plus 12 divided by 4 minus 16. Again, there are no grouping symbols and no exponents, so we'll jump right to multiplication and division. Uh, I see addition here first, then I see division, so I'm going to go ahead and do, again, the division first. Uh, this is a positive 12 because of that plus sign in front of it, so 12 divided by 4 is positive 3. So we're going to bring down a 3, and because it's positive, we'll put a plus sign in front of it. Negative 25 comes down, and so does this minus 16. Okay, now there's no more uh, multiplication or division, so now this is just addition and subtraction from left to right. Okay, so we start uh, with negative 25 plus 3. So negative 25 and positive 3, those are different signs, so we take the difference of those numbers. Uh, the difference is 22, and it's a negative 22. <clears throat> so now we have negative 22 minus 16. This time we're combining two negatives, so we'll add our numbers together to get 38, but it's going to be a negative 38 for our answer. Okay, number three. This time I see grouping symbols. I see two sets of grouping symbols. You have uh, absolute value bars, which remember count as grouping symbols, and you have negative 18 times 12 in there, and then you have uh, over here a set of parentheses with 6 squared minus 30. So the first step I'm going to do is uh, simplify what's inside the grouping symbols. So I'll start with this first set, what's inside the absolute value bars. Negative 18 times 12. Well, negative 18 times 12, we know is going to be a negative. 
uh, because a negative times a positive is a negative, so I'll go ahead and put that there. It's still going to be inside absolute value bars, so let's make sure we keep those there too. And now let's just do 18 times 12 off here to the side. So 18 times 12 is going to give me 216. So this is negative 216 inside uh, the absolute value bars. And now I'm going to uh, bring down my division sign and I'm going to simplify <coughs> also what's inside this set of parentheses. Um, since this set of grouping symbols is separate from this set, we can go ahead and do this in the same step. Inside these parentheses, I have 6 squared minus 30. So we'll start with exponents. 6 squared is 36, so this is 36. And then we'll just bring down the subtract 30 along with the parentheses. Okay, so now we have the absolute value of negative 216 divided by the quantity, because of those parentheses there, of 36 minus 30. So we'll keep simplifying now the grouping symbols. The absolute value of negative 216 we know is positive 216. So now I can drop the absolute value bars and just make this positive 216. I'm still going to bring down my division symbol. Now I'm going to simplify 36 minus 30, that's just 6, so this becomes 216 divided by 6. So now I'll just write this out and divide 216 uh, by 6, and if we do this, we get an answer of 36. Okay, number 4. Uh, so again, I see grouping symbols in this problem, so that's where I'll start. I have 11 minus 15 inside these grouping symbols. 11 minus 15 is negative 4. So I'm going to put my negative 4 here. Uh, but notice I have those parentheses and then I have an exponent outside those parentheses. So I need to keep both the parentheses and the exponent in my next step. And then everything else just comes down. Okay, so now I can't simplify what's inside the grouping symbols anymore. Negative 4 is as simple as it can be, but now I'm taking negative 4 to the second power, or negative 4 squared. Well, what does something squared mean? It means times itself. So negative 4 squared means negative 4 times negative 4, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So this gives me positive 16 in the next step. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. Everything else is going to come down. Okay, so now we're done with grouping symbols. We're done with exponents. So now we'll look for multiplication and division from left to right. I see division first. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So this is 8 minus 4 times 12. Next, I see multiplication. This is a negative 4 times 12. Remember to include that minus sign there in front of the 4. Uh, that's negative 48. And then we'll bring down the 8. And now we have 8 minus 48. Uh, you have a positive 8, subtract 48. So that's going to give us negative 40 for this answer. Okay, two more we're going to try on the back side. Uh, number five, remember whenever you're given the problem as a fraction, uh, work the numerator separately from the denominator, and then at the end we'll either divide or reduce. So I'm going to focus on the numerator right now at the top, and in the numerator you have uh, grouping symbols, and inside those grouping symbols I see subtraction and an exponent. So we're going to do the exponent inside the grouping symbols first. Uh, this is three squared. 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to make that a 9. Okay, And everything else in the numerator I'll just bring down. So 7 minus 9, and then I have the parentheses, and this, this is 2 minus 9. Now, some of you might be asking why I'm keeping this a minus sign, okay, and why I didn't make this a plus sign, just like I did up here, uh, when you had negative 4 squared, and I said that was positive 16. Well, it's because of where the parentheses are, okay? In this problem, notice there are no parentheses 
um, around the negative 3 um, itself. Okay, there are parentheses, but it's around the whole expression 2 minus 3 squared. So I want to make sure you understand the difference between a problem written like this and a problem written like this, because these give you two separate answers. When you see a negative number with parentheses around it, and then the exponent, it means take that negative number times itself. So if we're squaring a negative number, we always get a positive, and so something like this would become positive 9. But when you see a problem written like this, okay, what it really means is it means that negative sign, it means take the opposite of 3 squared. So it really means take 3 squared times negative 1. Well, if we follow the order of operations, we do the exponent first. And so 3 squared is 9, so it means negative 1 times 9, which would give us negative 9. So the parentheses, where they are, are really important, okay? Since there are no parentheses um, around just the minus 3 here, between the 3 and the exponent, okay? We do 3 squared, which is 9, but then we keep that minus sign in front of it. So I would copy this down and make sure you know the difference uh, between when you have parentheses there and when you don't. Okay, so that's my numerator. Uh, in the denominator, I see uh, an absolute value symbol. I see an absolute value of negative 6, so we can go ahead and change that uh, to positive 6. So this becomes positive 6 minus 4. Okay, and now we'll keep on simplifying the numerator. Uh, in the numerator, we have 2 minus 9 inside those parentheses. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So now we have 7 minus 9, and then those parentheses, remember, those are, they're important because this means times negative 7, so make sure you keep those there. Uh, in the denominator, I see 6 minus 4, which is 2. So the denominator simplified, so now we'll keep focusing on the numerator. Uh, I see subtraction, 7 minus 9, but then also I see multiplication, times negative 7. So we'll do the multiplication next. So this is negative 9 times negative 7. A negative times a negative is a positive. That would be plus 63. So you have 7 plus 63 all over 2. And now in the numerator, 7 plus 63 is 70. So this becomes 70 all over 2. And now, in the last step, we'll divide. This means 70 divided by 2, and 70 divided by 2 is 35. Okay, one more we're going to try, number 6. Uh, this is 15 times the quantity of 18 divided by 3 times 2, plus negative 4 to the third power. So again, start with your grouping symbols. I see grouping symbols in the middle. I see both division and multiplication, so we'll just work those from left to right, starting with the division. 18 divided by 3 is 6, so I'll do that, bring everything else down. Okay, and now I still have um, some multiplication inside those grouping symbols, so I can do this next. 6 times 2 is 12, so now this is 15 subtract 12, so I really don't need the parentheses, parentheses here since there's a subtraction sign in front of this, uh, plus negative 4 to the third power. So now my grouping symbols are done. Now it's time to do the exponents. Uh, so look at what we have here. We have a negative 4 inside parentheses to the third power. <coughs> so this means take negative 4 times itself but we're multiplying it by itself three times. So we're doing negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Well, we know a negative number squared is going to give us a positive. So for instance, negative 4 times negative 4 would be positive 16. But what happens when we have another negative 4 there? Well, that's just going to make it a negative again. So 16 times negative 4 is going to give us negative 64 and so this is what we put down below negative 4 to the third power. It's minus 64. So now we bring down our 15 and our minus 12. And now this is just uh, subtraction from here on out. Uh, so we first of all have 15 minus 12. 15 minus 12 is 3. So then we have 3 minus 64. 
3 subtract 64, take the difference of those numbers, and it's going to be a negative 61. All right, so if you had any questions over this video, 6th grade, make sure you have those written down. And until uh, the next time, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people.